Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. Him abiding in you is Him working in you and through you based on His ability. The only difference is this, that I let God be God. The Bible tells us that when the Holy Spirit came, certain things began to happen in the body. The people received the spirit of generosity. Holy Ghost filled people are generous people. They are people that live sacrificially to make sure that somebody else gets blessed. Without me, you can do nothing, he says. If you abide in me and I in you, you get to bear fruit. And we said that bearing fruit was not just a matter of producing fruit, and it means that, but a matter of also carrying fruit. Which means that as a branch, that you get to carry other people by making sure that they are taken care of. That God's, God wants to use you and I to take care of other people. Whether it be widows, we take care of them. Whether it be orphans, we take care of them. Whether it's somebody that's broke, we take care of them. We are helping other people succeed. Something the Lord taught Mama and I many years ago was this. You know, because we, we come from, you know, yeah, we're Canadians. I've lived here. I'm more Canadian than I'm Nigerian now. Um, but I'm still Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, you know why I know for sure it's a good thing? When there was a time I was having problems you know, as, we, as a church with, with this building, you know, trying to get this building, purchasing it. And uh, the Lord instructed me to deal with the people that had the mortgage of, of the building. And told me, he said, um, I want them off of the papers of this building. I said, how am I going to do that? He said, pay them off. I said, and how am I going to do that? He said, leave that to me. So I said, Lord, how much do you want to pay for it? He tells me the amount. We're owing them 300 and something thousand. And the Lord says, pay them 100,000 and... Um, they will go. You expect me to, to do that? He said, yes. I said, and exactly how am I going to do that? He said, you know what the Lord said to me? <laughs> I will never forget it. He said to me, are you not a Nigerian? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I said, what? He said, are you not a Nigerian? And I understood exactly what that meant. That means negotiate better than Trump. <laughs> so I, I came into the building. There were parts of the building that were falling apart, all kinds of problems. You know, this, it looks nice now. That whole place over there was falling apart. Outside was falling apart. The roof was a mess. So I called the guys in. I said, um, sit down. Uh, we need to talk business here. So I started negotiating with them. And they were trying to be hired. So I told them, I said, listen, you see all that mess over there? You see, the, you want the building? Take it. Take the problem. <laughs> and they looked at me and said, let's go talk to our, to our committee. <laughs> so they went and talked to their committee and came back. We'll accept your deal. We don't want the building. It's yours. Ah, yeah, yeah. I said, this is a good thing. So, <laughs> so I was uh, in, in Paris ministering and there was this, this uh, young man was walking with me, and uh, he said, I've been trying to connect with you for years. He said, 
And here in Paris, I get to meet with you. I'm sitting in the same car with you. He said, I am so blessed. I said, huh? So we're talking, he's asking me questions, and I told him this story about, are you not a Nigerian? And he said, hallelujah, I thought I had problems before. He said, hey, it's always a good thing, this thing that I have, I'm a Nigerian. I said, <laughs> I said yeah. Well, it's a <laughs> Let me tell you something, child of God. It's a good thing that you have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Speaking tongues. It's a good thing that confuses the devil. Don't let anybody, you know, they may say, holy rollers, roll all you want. As long as at the under end of the rolling, there is power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are anointed with power. Power that breaks the backbone of the enemy. There's boldness inside of you. That's why, child of God, we need not be afraid for the Spirit of God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what did it give to us? The spirit of love. Of what? Power. And of what? A sound mind. I'm not crazy. I've got a sound mind. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know where crazy people are? The crazy people don't know that they are crazy. So don't, you know, as long as you're walking with Holy Ghost people, you're okay. (laughs) If you're walking with the world, then maybe you've got some problems. They were generous people. They sacrificed, they sold property and everything and made sure that everybody was taken care of. That's what the word of God said. Acts chapter 2 verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods and patted them to all men as every man had what? Need. So they got rid of needs. The body of Christ that is Holy Spirit filled and charged up should not have people that are struggling because they have a need that is left unmet. There's no lack in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 46, it says, And they continuing daily with one accord, united, with one accord in where? The temple. Oh, what? Now, that, that might seem like nothing. Remember, these are the people they didn't want in the temple. They were busy telling them not to preach, not to say anything. But they are in one accord, united in the temple, united in the place where the enemy was saying, you cannot be here. They stayed together. Child of God, Holy Ghost people, people that are filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost, operate in unity in spite of all the enemy wants to do to keep them disunited. They say, we are united, we are one people, we are together, we will never break rank, we will accomplish the will of God in the land of the living. That's us. United. Breaking bread from house to house. So they were united in the temple. They were united in the homes. They did eat meat with gladness, not sadness, and with singleness of heart. That's what Holy Ghost does. Verse 47 says, Praising God. And what happened? And having favor with all the people. Having favor with all the people. And the Lord, when they had favor with all the people, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Why? They had favor. Lay your hands on your head. 
Father, I declare that because the Holy Ghost is in my life and on my life, I have favor. I receive favor. Therefore, I will be fruitful in every area of my life. Souls shall come into the kingdom because your favor is on my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible tells us that they were fruitful. Acts 2 verse 41. Let's look at that again. Then they that received his word were baptized. The same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. That's because of favor. 3,000 souls added. Fruitfulness. May God cause us to be fruitful. Because I truly am convinced that fruitfulness is as a result of the Holy Spirit abiding in our lives. Fruitfulness. The first mandate and declaration of God over the people of God was fruitfulness. I shared with you yesterday that the first Pentecost and the first Pentecost the Ten Commandments or the Torah was given. In this Pentecost that happened about 2,000 years ago God released words but this time the words rested on their heads, impacting their minds, impacting their hearts. And they, from that very moment, needed not to be afraid. They were able to accomplish the purposes of God. That Torah was given on the sixth day of Sivan, on a Sabbath. The sixth day is the day that man was created. This particular Pentecost, about 2,000 years ago, happened at the same time. It was God putting his hand on ordinary men. So Paul was saying later on, look amongst you. There are not many noble, not many, you know, VIPs around. God chose the ordinary to do something extraordinary. And this Pentecost, now, God is saying the same thing to you and to me. He's saying to us as a church, I want to use the ordinary to do something extraordinary. And the Lord said to me, I want to build up a generation of men and women that will dwarf whatever happened in the early church because that was the beginning. Now I want to do something extraordinary and it's in a time and a season when it seems like it is impossible. But I know no, no impossibilities. It ain't over. In a time when people are running every which way and all kinds of foolishness is happening in the world, God says, this is the perfect time for me to speak my word and turn the nations around. God wants to shake nations. And he wants you and I to be part of his mighty army. Hallelujah. 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 Army of the living God. It's time to march with an unbroken chain. Locked arm in arm, moving towards this Jericho. 
and the walls of Jericho must come down. It's a promised land. Blessed be the name of the living God. No lack was the result of the Holy Ghost being present. Hallelujah. Let me begin to wrap up. The Bible tells us that when the Holy Ghost came, rested upon them, and, and please understand, Jesus said, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, they were filled. Filled and baptized are not the same. So whatever happened on the day of Pentecost was just a starter. But God is, in this last of the last days, going to baptize us. Amen. I'm reminded about an experience I had in the beginnings of, of, the, of the church. We were meeting in a, in a school called R.F. Morrison Elementary School. And... Um, one day, I was ministering the Word, just as I'm ministering now, and I can feel my feet on the, feet, on the ground now, the way I'm walking. But this particular day, I couldn't feel my feet. I was floating. But I see my feet moving, but it's like there was a, a, a cushion of air underneath my feet. So I'm looking, my feet are on the ground, but I cannot feel it. You, you can feel your feet, right? Yes. But I can feel mine. It's not because it's numb. I can feel it. And I'm moving, and the power of God was hitting that congregation. People were dropping under the power of God. Yes. You were there? Yes, they were. So I say, Lord, what's going on? The Lord says, you're operating in baptism. I said, what? He said, this is what baptism looks like. So I said, explain it to me. I'm having this private discussion with the Lord. He says, most of my church is not baptized. He says, you've not experienced baptism yet, but you are going to experience baptism. I'm watching this, and he began to explain to me that baptism was about, let me put it this way. If, if I had a, a basin, a big basin, and I put a cup at the bottom of that basin, and I began to pour water into that cup, it will fill a quarter, a half, three quarters, full, full. It will overflow. It's overflowing. And while it's overflowing, it will fill it from the outside, quarter, two quarters, three quarters, full, full, and then it will overwhelm it. But that cup is still resting at the bottom of the basin. But the more I pour water in there, pretty soon that cup that was resting at the bottom will float. Are you with me? That is baptism. That is baptism. When you don't have any control. But God and his word has total control. He carries you. These are waters where you cannot walk. God wants to take us to a dimension that will scare the devil. I will cause the devil to begin to scream. Get them out of here. They are killing me. Yes. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. This is the time when the true prophets are moving. And they can call down thunder and storms and fire and everything. And build. Get them out of here. Yes. 
We are not going to get out of here wimps. The devil is going to beg. Because the baptism of the Holy Spirit and power shall flow in us and through us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. How is this going to happen? Is it going to happen because I, I start fasting more? No, no. This is not about you fasting now. This is about God doing what God says he's going to do. Touching ordinary men, ordinary women, and causing them to begin to act as manifestations of the sons of the Most High God. Ordinary me, ordinary you, ordinary us. We look around and say, how can this be? Well, he had five loaves and two fishes. What is this among so many? Just give it to me. He broke bread. He gave thanks. He says, put them in order. Yeah? Sit them in fifties. Is that what he said? This is the day of fifties. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we sit under the order of the Most High God. And God is about to do some serious distribution. And at the end of it, we're going to have 12 baskets. And those 12 baskets is the government of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The change is here. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. We are not going to be looking at the day of Pentecost 2,000 plus years ago and saying, oh, look at the amazing thing that happens then. Oh, but they are going to be looking forward and saying, yay, this is it. This is it. The the blood moons have happened. This is it. They didn't have blood moons. We got the blood moons. Hear me loud and clear. The Holy Ghost eradicates poverty. It eradicates lack. It eradicates anything that is contrary. It will produce healing. It will produce deliverance. It will produce every good thing. Amen? Because one of the things that the Holy Ghost did, one of the first miracles was a man that had been at the gate, paralyzed, and he was over 40 years old. Carried there to the beautiful gate, he knew consistency. And Peter and John said to him, look on us. Man looks at them, expecting to get something, and then they said, silver and gold we don't have. But what we do have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and what? Walk. He gave him their hand, they lifted him up, his ankle bones were strengthened, and he leaped. And the Bible says he didn't run home. He did one thing that he wanted to do all these years. He stepped inside the temple. That's where they told him he could not go into because he was paralyzed. You cannot come in here. And he was born that way. But he did not allow bitterness and offense in his spirit. He kept on coming. He'd missed the healing, his deliverance. One time, Jesus came, cleaned out the whole place, healed everybody. He missed it. Cleaned out everybody. Second time he came to cleanse the temple. He missed it. Now he's dead. And they're saying, in the name of Jesus Christ. But he did not allow himself to be offended. One of the greatest challenges I've faced as a minister of the gospel is to be reminded of where I started because I did not call myself to the ministry. I did not. I didn't want anything to do with ministry. I was willing to support it, 
greedy really businessmen that gave money so other people can go preach. That I was very willing to do. I, <laughs> no problem with that. But that's not what God wanted. He wanted me. So my father put me on the offering plate. And that's how I got into ministry. And so now and then, I say to God, so this is what you called me for? This is it? Oh yeah, I've gone around the world, but I still come to, is this it? You understand? I've seen God raise the dead. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen God do amazing miracles. I've even been graced to know when certain people were going to die. Exact. I told them what not to do. They said, if you do this, you're going to, both of you are going to die the same day if you do it. And they did. Are you with me? Being in the secret place of the Most High God, hearing Jesus talking and another person talking, the, the prayers of somebody praying, asking the Lord, just, and, and the Lord brought me into the conversation. I've been, I've had experiences in God. And then I come and say, is this supposed to be it? But God says, he can take ordinary people and do extraordinary things because the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And all I can do is just believe God. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.